Hey guys, welcome back. I'd like to look at a forecast model in Stata, and I'd like to know what U.S. real GDP growth will be in the U.S. in 2021. Also, I'd like to look at world GDP growth. Now, I like to make my own estimate using the same data as the IMF, and I'd like to see maybe we can do better. So today you're going to learn how to make this forecast, and you're going to learn a little bit about the properties of a stationary series. This is my Stata program code to make our forecast model. We need to let Stata know that this is a time series analysis. And now let's look at the data. Here I have my year variable. I have real GDP growth for the US. I have GDP and current prices for the US. And I have world GDP growth. Let's look at a time series line plots of GDP and current prices. But we want to make a forecast model. We want to determine future values of GDP. Or maybe we want to determine GDP growth. GDP can take a path like this. Or GDP can take a path downward. Or perhaps GDP doesn't change. One thing we may want to look at as a starting point, we have a constant mean and a constant variation from the mean. This is our mean. This may not be a great starting point. For the forecast model, we're going to be forecasting in the future. If our mean is changing, our forecast will be inaccurate. Therefore, consider real GDP growth. Our, our mean is likely the solid green line. And if we were to forecast real GDP growth, it may be around the mean. Why is that the case? Well, our mean is likely not changing over time. It is likely that our mean is constant. And this is a good thing for forecasting. It is likely that real GDP growth is a stationary series. So the quality of having a constant mean and constant variance from the mean is called stationarity. Now, we may want to determine if the variance is changing over time. Do we see variance increasing over time or decreasing over time? In the program code, I've created a variable for the average, and we can see the average plotted here. It looks like there is constant variation from the, the average. Maybe we can show the standard deviations over time. That is the deviation of each value of real GDP growth from the mean, uh, squared, and plot over time. If we look at this plot, it looks like there is a fair amount of deviation from the mean early on in the sample. This is around the early 80s. But then from the mid 80s to the mid 2000s, there is not much deviation from the average. There was a large deviation from the average corresponding to the financial crisis. And then finally in 2020, we see a, another large deviation from the average derived from the coronavirus pandemic. With these large deviations from the mean, we may expect a skewed distribution of real GDP growth. Let's determine skewness with some commands in Stata. The first command is histogram, and this will show us a histogram of real GDP growth. With this histogram of GDP growth, we can see a skewed distribution. The histogram shows frequencies, and these ranges, these intervals, are called classes. In this case, we have six classes. The command k density estimates a probability density function. Here, the estimate of the probability density function looks somewhat normal, but it's also skewed. It looks skewed to the left. We can also plot both together. With a distribution like this, we may expect the mean to be less than the median. For instance, the mean may be here, while the median, the middle value in a sorted sample, will be to the right of the mean. With a skewed distribution, we may want to use a different estimation technique. Let's look at some other commands in Stata to determine skewness. SKTest is one command. For SKTest, the null hypothesis is normality. In this case, we reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis of skewness. Now, the SK test may go skewness because of the 2020 pandemic and the large decline in GDP. Another command in Stata is QNorm. QNorm will show us a representation of normality in this solid line. Our data is plotted relative to the solid line. We can see several outliers here that are negative, and these Outliers are the recessions in our sample. Therefore, we, we may want to consider quantile regression, which uses the median rather than the mean. Let's, let's run a regression with the mean and the median and compare. 
A quick comparison shows that the constant for the regression with the mean is less than the constant with the regression with the median. Remember, our median is greater than our mean, or the mean is to the left of the median in our distribution. And the constant is the average value of our variable. I'm going to forecast out of sample with the mean rather than the median. But a quantile regression may be a viable alternative. Now to determine stationarity, we can use some commands in Stata. One command is called dfuller. This is the Dickey-Fuller test for stationarity. The null hypothesis is a unit root process, and the alternate hypothesis is stationarity. Let's first test the GDP and current prices. The Dickey-Fuller test statistic is not less than our critical values, and the p-value is not less than 0.05, my chosen level of significance. This is what we expect. Remember, our GDP and levels is not stationary. However, for real GDP growth, the test statistic is less than the critical values. This indicates stationarity and our p-value is less than 0.05. There are some other methods to determine stationarity. There's a post-estimation method called ESTAT IC. If we consider a regression model with uh, one lag of the dependent variable, we can use the Akai key information criteria to determine the correct number of lags. We can use the Akai key information criteria generated from each model and compare the models. We want to choose the model with the lowest AIC and or BIC. There are also some other commands that we can use to choose the number of lags. One command is called varsoc, V-A-R-S-O-C. And here we can easily choose the minimized AIC or BIC. The star will indicate the number of lags such that AIC is minimized. Corgram is another command in Stata. There are several great uh, resources on YouTube that explain how to choose the correct number of lags. And for a little more theory behind the autoregressive model, check out Eric Labar. Now, my forecast model, I want to keep it simple. Let's regress real GDP growth on its lag. This is an AR1 model, an autoregressive model of real GDP growth in the United States and I'm going to store my estimates as Eric. Data provides these steps in their overview of forecasting on their website. You first run a regression model and then store the estimates, and you can forecast a model with many variables. Stata also has a nice user interface. You can use this user interface to make your forecast. So I'm going to store my estimates from this AR1 model, and if we look at my data, we can see that the data in our sample only goes to year 2020. Let's forecast five years in the future. Run this code to create those extra years. Now we have the extra years in our data set with missing values. Now we're going to begin our forecast model. Let's define our forecast model as Eric model. Our estimates for the forecast will come from the previous stored estimates from the regression Eric. Then we generate the point estimates for our forecast. Let's plot the real GDP growth data with our forecast. Our model forecasts real GDP growth through 2025. It looks like GDP growth will not return to its average in 2021. It will be closer to the average in 2025. In 2021, the GDP growth will be close to 0%, according to our forecast model. In 2025, it will be closer to the average, 2.476. Now consider world GDP growth, and consider world GDP growth after 2010, after the global financial crisis. Here we can see world real GDP growth and IMF forecasts after 2010. The actual growth values are in black, and the IMF forecasts at different points in time are these colored dashed lines. One thing to note about these forecasts is that they are optimistic. Forecasts suggest a return to high GDP growth. Now, if you go to this website, you can download real GDP growth for the world. If you scroll down and select by country groups, and be sure to have world selected and choose the GDP values that you want to see. Note that GDP growth is a percent change in gross domestic product. 
Here's a time series line plot of world GDP growth. One thing to note here is the decline in GDP in 2020. There are various commands and stata that I mentioned before to determine lag length. I'm going to choose one lag of world GDP growth, and I'm going to save the estimates as Eric too. We'll forecast just as before, and here's my forecast for world GDP growth. Similar to US GDP growth, the world will not bounce back from the pandemic in one year. Now let's drop those forecasts and compare to the IMF forecasts after 2010. I'm going to generate a new variable defined by world GDP growth, but before 2011. Then I'm going to forecast just as before. And here's my forecast with actual real GDP growth. Note also the missing values for world growth after 2010. Here are the forecasts from the AR1 model. Let's compare my forecast with the IMFs. My forecast tracks the actual GDP growth values very closely relative to the IMF projections. So the question is, why were these projections off? Why did IMF researchers forecast so optimistically? Let's look back at the time series line plot of world GDP growth. Before 2010 and before the global financial crisis, GDP growth was rather high. It was close to 5%. 4.5%. Perhaps the IMF thought that world GDP growth would continue at the high values. However, if we consider the entire sample, the average is much less. So in the years following the financial crisis, many people thought GDP growth would be better than what it was. This period following the global financial crisis was termed the Great Malaise by Joseph Stiglitz. He called the U.S. recovery middling. Christine Lagarde, the managing director of the IMF, had called the state of the global economy the new mediocre. So world GDP growth was not as high as what people predicted. It was a period of malaise, or a period of middling growth. However, with a simple AR1 model, we may expect forecasts closer to the average in our sample. Thank you very much. I'm posting my program code to my website, and you can check out more in the description of this video. Also like the video if you enjoy it and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.